A family of nine went over this dam while tubing on Dan River. And the current they would just swish, swish, swoosh, swoosh everywhere. The water was going everywhere. Four of them are dead, and a pregnant 30-year-old is still missing. Someone's got to tell the story, and somebody's got to... Someone's got to put us out there and tell what really happened. What really happened was an accident that could hit anyone out there floating if you don't know the warning signs. And if we knew that that dam was there, none of us, none of us would have went down. Tonight, we'll show you how to avoid the dam, what to do if you fall over, and other must-know safety advice, including the fact that not all life jackets are created equal. You would think this would save your child. We used this life jacket in our pool, and it absolutely tried to drown our child. From now until 6, let's dig into how to protect your family on the water. For most of us, when we hear talk about a dam, this is what comes to mind. Some huge waterfall type thing designed to turn the flow of water into energy so you can use it at your house. But take a look at the dam and the dam river that the tubers went over. It's a much smaller drop off. One of the survivors from the tubing trip says they didn't even realize what it was. We were on the, the river and everything, it was pretty cool. And we were going and we did, we heard the water a little bit, but we've been on a river before and you know, it's a little dip and keep going. So that's what we thought it was. Where this all happened, I didn't know how, how I didn't know what was down there. I didn't know what was coming. Even though the dam is not that big, Madison Maya Dan's recreation director, Lee Mitchell, says dams create a lot of powerful water that puts you in danger. Most of them are trying to generate power, which is going to create a turbine system under the water, and it's going to hold you under that water because it's, it's made to, to generate energies, and you just happen to be in that in area that you don't want to be in and should be in. To really comprehend the big force of the water, look at the little pinky finger of 18-year-old Irene. It's bruised because it was the only way she could grab onto the wall at a dam to keep from being sucked under by the current. There was a little hole in the wall, probably about this big, big enough for me to stick my pinky through. And I held on to that the whole entire time, the whole entire time. Those poor people, the whole story just really breaks your heart. According to Duke Energy, they started building the dam in 2009. It was a 620 megawatt capacity that creates enough energy to power nearly half a million homes. To help make sure you know exactly where the dam is, if you go tubing, check out the satellite view here. Now, before you get there, you're going to go under one bridge, which starts a big bend in the river. As you're coasting along, you'll go under two more bridges where the river starts to turn back in the other direction. If you see that, paddle to the side and find place to get out before you slam into that dam. I know that's a lot to remember, especially weeks from now when you might actually hit the water. So I put up this same information on my Facebook page. Just search for Watchdog Ben. From there, take a screenshot of this map and save it to your phone. Next time, before you go tubing, whip that out, take a look, and remind yourself of the warning signs. And speaking of warning signs, Duke Energy says it is installing new, larger warning signs above and below the dam as quickly as possible. They want to reinforce that the public should not get anywhere close to it. But if for some reason you missed those, here is the big takeaway to watch out for. You're going to see a drop off right here that goes all the way across the river with this big building to the side of it. Remember a break like that across the entire river with a building beside of it? Not just some rapids. It is the dangerous dam and you need to swim away as fast as you can to hop out on the side of the river. If you can't make it out and you do go over the falls though, experts say don't panic. There is a special technique you can use to get to the shore. WFMI News 2's Ben Smart draws it out to help you stay safe. First, try to escape by swimming hard to the side. If that doesn't work, swim hard into the current, curl up into a ball that will submerge you below the circulation into the underlying river current, allowing you to escape. So maybe you go tubing somewhere else, or even if you go to the Dan River, it's important to know this dam is not the only dangerous part on the water. Over the years, we have covered so many people getting lost on a river somewhere or dealing with another issue of some kind. Water experts say tubing can be done safely, and it's a whole lot of fun when it is, but they tell WF1 News 2's Adoria Chumba there are some general guidelines you should follow. They just don't come prepared. Uh, they don't leave home in time or get in the river in time before it gets dark. Just one of many mistakes Stokes County EMS say Dan River tubers make. A lot of people will come up here and they'll just look at a, a map 
and just kind of say, well, maybe it'll take me two hours or something. That's another one, underestimating the time it takes a tube from one point to another. We had one here a couple of weeks ago that people put in, and it took them about uh, three hours longer than I thought. So we actually had to go out and look for them. It just so happened they had gotten out at an access point when we found them. So. And in the case of the stranded tubers on the Rockingham part of the river, not checking the weather forecast. So, so we're going to be stuck on the river because of the lightning? That's the reason why we're trying to get off, because it's lightning. I understand. Wood says launching a rescue in bad weather can be dangerous for first responders. Lost tubers might have to wait long hours. Break a fully charged cell phone and even then you may not be able to get out a signal in some places on the river. He also advises use a tubing company that can keep track instead of going out on your own. Bring your life jackets, bring a helmet, bring some extra water in a um, waterproof container. That's not a bad idea. Keep your cell phone in a waterproof container too. A North Carolina man died over the weekend after drowning at Falls Lake. Officials say the 30 year old was part of a group of friends that rented a boat. Witnesses say he jumped into the lake to get a piece of clothing that had blown off. And when he went overboard, he drowned. Now, first responders say he would still be alive today if he had been wearing a life jacket. Life jackets are the number one way to protect yourself on the water. And in some cases, the law requires you to wear one. But one size, even one type, does not fit all. You would think this would save your child. We use this life jacket in our pool and it absolutely tried to drown our child. This viral video tells parents not to use this life jacket the toddler is wearing. The claim is that it's defective and your child could drown. Now, we checked with the Coast Guard Auxiliary and they say there are three types of life jackets. and The one the little girl is wearing in this video is not defective. It's just a different type than they expected. That type of life jacket is not designed to automatically keep your head above water. If you're wearing type three, you need to put some effort in to tilt your head above water. All the wearable life jackets, the lower the number, the more protection it provides. So type one, two or three, you have to have on a vessel. Um, if you are wearing a type three, you have to make an effort to swim, things like that. Um, type two and one will hold your head above water you know, better. None of them are going to work if you don't wear it. Be aware when you go to buy it, types three is normally the cheaper one. Now, people over the age of 13 aren't required to wear a life vest, but if you're on a boat, you do need enough life jackets on it for everyone on board. The most important thing to look out for is this stamp on the life vest right there. It's the official Coast Guard stamp, which states it's a certified flotation device. If you're not sure about a life jacket, you can call up the Coast Guard Auxiliary. They'll inspect everything from your life vest, your boat, to make sure you're as safe as possible on the water. Water safety is so important, former Carolina Panthers star Greg Olson has spent the better part of his career educating people about it. He says he spends a lot of time on the lake with his kids and wants to make sure everyone knows the precautions they should be taking. If you're careless or you're not paying attention or you're not taking the right precautions, unfortunately tragedies and accidents uh, do happen. To be alert, you have to be on the lookout, but you know it starts with just being prepared before you even head out. Two years ago, Olson even teamed up with law enforcement to surprise North Carolina boaters with safety gear and life jackets. They pulled over boaters in place of issuing safety protocols and violations, and Olson treated them to the free gear and some local sporting goods information. It is important to keep an extra eye out on younger children, especially while swimming. Kids can drown anywhere there's water. That includes pools, hot tubs, the beach, lakes, streams, and even bathtubs. According to the American Red Cross, a child or a weaker swimmer can drown in the time it takes to reply to a text, check a fishing line, or even apply sunscreen. Abby Taylor goes over the warning signs. Experts say drowning is the leading cause of unintentional deaths in children ages 1 through 4 and it can happen instantly. Around two minutes, that's when the brain gets majorly affected. Norm Waite, Senior YMCA Aquatics Director Kaylee Conlin says you should always be monitoring small children near the water. A lot of the time when drowning is silent and it doesn't look like drowning. Conlin says starting babies out and swimming lessons is just one of the several precautions you can take. Baby gates, um, some type of pool cover or a barrier that blocks them from getting into the water. Um, if you, if it's really busy and you are having a get together, go ahead and put a life jacket on them, even if you're not planning on getting the water. Introducing water at a young age can improve their confidence in the water later on. Condition them to practice it with you 
The goal is that if they were to slip into the water by accident, they're so used to that feeling or that motion, they'll try to do it themselves. And always have children ask for permission before getting into any type of water. Being able to get outside and hop in the water is one of the best parts of living in North Carolina. The outdoor experience is glorious here and can be so much fun, but we've got to respect the water and be prepared.